Hey everyone, I'm back. I took a little break. I was traveling. I had a uh, continuing education uh, course in Toronto a couple weeks ago, and uh, you know, glad to be in the U.S. of A. because we have a better, better reception up here. And I, I even had Verizon, but you know, I'm glad to be in the U.S. of A. Anyways, uh, and if I sound a little nasally today, it's because last week I got deviated septum surgery. Not the funnest experience, but we'll talk more about that later. Uh, anyways, I wanted to talk about a subject that everyone can relate to today. Um, and, it's, and it's how to keep customers longer. You know, and I wanted to talk about specifically five ways to, 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 to keep your customers longer. I want to start out with a few, uh, few stats, just a few uh, uh, things that just to, to think about and to ponder on as we discussed today. And uh, let's, let's go from there. Uh, acquiring a new customer is anywhere from five to 25 times more expensive than retaining an existing one. That's crazy. Uh, research done by Frederick uh, Retchheld of Bain and Company that shows increasing customer retention rates by 5%, profits, uh, increases profits by 25% to 95%. Who doesn't want increased profits? Yeah, I do, and I know you do. You guys do too. So, uh, the probability of selling to an existing customer is sixty to seventy percent. Uh, the profitability of selling to a a uh, a, a new prospect is five to twenty percent. Uh, those are just some marketing metrics there. A, a two percent increase in customer retention has the same effect as decreasing costs by ten percent. That's a, that's a really interesting one. One right there. Um, Everyone, we, we, uh, we have a bad quarter, we have a bad month, we think, oh, where, where, where can we cut? But it, we really should be thinking, what better experiences can we provide for our, our customers? Because it shows right, it says right there that a 2% two in, two increase in customer retention has the same effect as decreasing costs by 10%. That's, that's crazy. Uh, and that was uh, a study done by the um, Emmett Murphy and Mark Murphy. And, it, and another one here is a dissatisfied customer will tell between 9 to 15 people about their experience. And around 13% of those dissatisfied customers will tell more than 20 people. And that was performed by the White House Office of Consumer Affairs. Uh, happy customers who get their issues resolved tell about 4 to 6 people about their experience. And that was also done by the White House um, Office of Consumer Affairs. So... Some, some, some thinking, some things to think about there. Um, and it's it, it, and the day of uh, social media and everything, everything you have as a company and everything um, that you do is out there and people are judging and, and commenting on. So uh, that's important. And people, people look at that kind of stuff. And they look at reviews and they look at, they look at everything. And we, and people mess up. Companies mess up. We make mistakes and that's, that's all part of the process, but it's how we handle those mistakes. It's going to put us ahead or behind our competitors. So, uh, going forward, let's start let's talk about number one here. Why are you uh, wh Where are you currently losing your, your customers? Um, where is the customer experience breakdown happening? Is there are people frustrating trying to navigate your online ordering process? Is your customer service failing to resolve their issue? Uh, do you feel disconnected from your brand after being loyal uh, customer? Or, customers for so long, so many years. Um, when a customer closes their account or decides to stop uh, frequent, frequenting your business, uh, do you send them emails and try to find out why? And if sending a personal email feels uncomfortable, then send a survey. Um, you can also start paying attention to online reviews and following up directly to learn more about customer feedback. And that's, that's huge. And you can even take that too, and, and this is a whole other talking point together, uh, to use that towards your employ employees, uh, the ones that quit on you and things like that. Um, why? Uh, you know, people do exit interviews, and those are great because you, you need to take those to heart and see where you guys as a company can change. And sometimes it's just not a fit. And uh, obviously there's nothing to be done. Uh, the, uh, the employees need to be removed, and that's it. But... And once in a while, there's customers like that too, you know. But um, for the most part, we want to keep our customers. So 
constant contact would be would be number two after you kind of figure out where your where your uh, leak is happening where, where is your breakdown within your business uh, that's that's you losing you those customers um, so find that breakdown is number one find find where you're losing those customers at um, and, and dial that in and then and, and, and do some cleage stop that bleeding quickly and then let's start going into uh, two three and four and five to help you uh, maintain and, and to continue to make customer experience more enjoyable. Uh, number two, you hear constant contact all the time. Uh, I think there's an e uh, email campaign company out there called Constant Contact. Um, yeah, a few uh, businesses I, off the top of my head that I, I feel that are uh, pretty good at doing that and the, maybe they're ahead of the game were, are car dealerships. You know, there's always something they're offering uh, there's always a chance to win some massive uh, discount or some type of uh, awesome customer uh, service experience, and that's that's awesome. Um, but and then but you got to think, you know, and, and and they're they're better than most businesses because they've got something dialed in. They know the metrics and they understand the, the importance of return business. But how how do we make things more personal? How do we how do we customize those experiences even more? Um, Another one is medical offices are also great with following up with uh, appointment reminders and maybe some have some newsletters. But again, um, where can we make those more personal? How, how can we make those more effective in, in what we're doing uh, as a company? Um, you can write newsletters all day long. You can, you can do, put all these plans in action. Uh, but if, if no one's opening them, uh, no one's... Uh, you know, responding to what you're creating, obviously there's gotta be something changing and something's gotta, something's gotta change. Um, let me see here, let me get back down here. Um, what, what else can we do to make these contacts more personal? So first maybe you make a list of your customers and break them down by categories, profitability, services, you know, et cetera, whatever, whatever is your, your customer uh, base and how you how you want to categorize them, and then decide uh, what uh, what customers get what or how much contact. Um, obviously, any business has those 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 rare gem customers that just are awesome, and they you know they they constantly are, are buying and, and upgrading and all that kind of, or whatever your your uh, your business model is, and you know those ones are the ones you probably want to be. Giving those contact to, of course, and but but you got to remember too that these other uh, customers below them, you know that that's those are those ones are nice, but those aren't making up your entire bottom line. You still have to put contact uh, contact to all the the rest of those groups, and those can be, and those contacts can be made up of you know care packages, um, personal emails, uh, holiday gifts, um, just and some anything you can do to make things more personal. Is, is, is even as much as just going to get a dozen of cookies and bring them to those those customers, those loyal customers, uh, monthly, quarterly, whatever whatever you decide, something that makes them feel that you're keeping them top of mind. Uh, that's 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 huge. And uh, everyone, you know, in the early 2000s and 90s, email was the, was huge. Everyone, oh, we got to have email newsletters. We got to constantly touch people with email. Not so much today. Email open rates are not what they used to be. Uh, I just checked one of my campaigns that I have running right now. I think the best email I have out there right now is a 33% open rate. That's not awesome. It's a third. But in the flip side, if you look at text message, uh, messages, they have a 100% open rate. So maybe if you're not doing it now, maybe that's something to start looking at, into and transitioning to. Get your message out there, okay? All right. Number three is get a guarantee. You know we've talked about this before about the importance of guarantees and uh, and and doing that. But let's let's walk through a few steps of how you can put your guarantee uh, in action or or get one together. Um, what is something that your customers have in common? What is what what is a what is a uh, common pain other than uh, we just want we just want a, a good job done? You know, or we just want <laughs> You know, you have those vague uh, customer uh, comments that you hear, but you need to dive deeper 
you know, well, well, why is that important to you? Okay, you want a good job. Okay, well, why why is that important to you? So so what? You get down to the deeper pain of what what the, what what's really bothering them, and you get that common pain, and then you um, um, then you do something uh, to um, to make that uh, a remedy to that. So like maybe um, you know, instead of uh, guarantee this, you know, we'll do a good job. Make it make it more uh, exact. Like, hey, you know, uh, make you smile once a, once a month. A uh, free free puppy, uh, a free puppy with this unsatisfied unsatisfactory. Excuse me, can't even talk today. Unsatisfactory service or etc. You know, make them make them different. No, don't make them plain Jane. You know, don't make them this corporate guarantee. You know, because people people want. You know, we're we're in the day and age now that we, people want. To deal with real people and they want to deal with real scenarios you know so have something more specific um, offer a specific no-lose res- uh, remedy to this, their problem you know dinner and a movie massage double their money back those are all specific remedies for that for their problems um, and, and, and it can be anything um, and then after you get that figured out then brand that baby um, Free lunch guarantee. Make you smile once a month, or lunch is on us. You know, something, something as simple as that. People respond to it, and people, people want that um, a no lose remedy to their to their business with you. Uh, cur- currently, uh, in Nuclean, we have a, a guarantee called the um, "We Are Not Perfect" guarantee, where we fix the problem within 24 hours, or the cleaning's on us. And that's and that's been huge because. Do we get? Do we have to credit back services? Yeah, we make mistakes sometimes. But do we have a remedy to to make that uh, to make that customer whole again? Yeah, they don't have to pay for unsatisfactory services. So that's that's a that's a that's a, uh, a a great remedy uh, solution there. So so think of that on on getting a guarantee to put together for your company. Uh, for, number four is have a differentiator. Or a unique selling proposition. What what are what is that? Like, you know, ours is you know we'll, we'll call you back within an hour and uh, fix it within 24 hours, or or the cleaning's on us. So it's the one 124 differentiator. Like sometimes we don't always answer our phones. We're in the field or we're with a customer, and but we will call you back within an hour and get it fixed within 24. So it, it's connected to your guarantee. But um, again. What do you do when you're thinking about a uh, differentiator, developing one, or a unique selling proposition? You got to think, what do you do that nobody else does? That's number one thing you have to think about there. And number two is specific problems you solve. You know, customer, and then you got to think, what are your customer specific problem, and then your specific solution to that customer specific problem, and then perfect it and then name it. And then, by the way, a lot of these talking points I'm talking about right now, majority of them come from my uh, a, a friend and mentor, uh, Mike Campion. Um, so that if you want to learn, you know, more, uh, that's I can I can we we discuss more about that. But he is he's my source for a lot of this. So I want to want to throw that out there. Um, and then uh, number five, after you get your guarantee in place, after you have your unique selling proposition going for you. Number five is keep your building and customer facing stuff clean. You don't know how many how how many times people lose business because people walk into the restroom and it's disgusting. It's something out of a horror movie, you know, or it looks clean but it smells disgusting. Um, it is proven that people spend more money with with uh, businesses if their showrooms are, are, are clean, if their reception areas are clean, you know, if you're, if you're, you know, just general customer facing areas are clean and heaven forbid restrooms, you know, no one wants to talk about restrooms, but they, they're, they're money makers for your company. <laughs> you don't, you probably never heard that before, but restrooms are money makers for your, for your company because they can make or break it for a customer. I've heard, I've heard many uh, people talk to me over, over the years. And I've heard a lot of stories about, man, I, I was about ready to do this deal with this, this uh, business. I went to their restroom and it was disgusting. And I couldn't do it. I, I had to walk out because if that's how they care about their building, like, how are they going to care about me as a customer? You know? So those things you have to think about. Um, so keeping that stuff clean, 
you know, keep it smelling nice. Um, don't overlook those customer facing areas because it's, it's a way that um, you're losing uh, potential customers and customers from doing business with you. So that's number five, keep your, keep your building clean. Um, if you wanna learn more uh, and know, know how we can help you retain more customers, schedule your huddle by clicking the links above right now. All a huddle is is we're gonna come out, out there, out to you, we're gonna help you find a solution to your problem. Even if, you, if, even if we aren't a, uh, a part of your solution, that's where we're gonna help you uh, find is a solution. Um, on top of that, you'll receive a, a printed copy of these five ways um, uh, to uh, retain customers that we're talking about today. You'll have, you'll I'll bring a, a printed copy of that out to you. You'll receive a, a surprise gift and not to mention a dozen cookies. So schedule your huddle today. Click those links above. If you're in Pocatello or Blackfoot, click the Pocatello link. If you're Idaho Falls or Rexburg, click the Idaho Falls link. And schedule that uh, huddle. Let's get things rolling and let's help you solve some problems. Uh, so click today and uh, we'll see you next week. Have a good day. See ya.